I just want to start off by just clapping and just saying congratulations. It's been an interesting few months, that's for sure. BTC hit its all-time high and then smashed through it and got all the way up to $67,000. Just amazing, amazing, amazing. If you've been holding in since the 30s, congratulations. If you've been holding in or holding on a lot earlier than that, congratulations also. There's been a lot of people that have said to me that crypto's dead this year, that as soon as we, we hit that 64K, came back down to the 50s and the 40s and then breached the 30s, went as low as 28K, that it was all over. The bull market was over. Well, it's not. It seems like we're following very, very closely to the 2013 cycle. And what do I mean by that? So, buddy of mine, Benjamin Cohen, he's uh, gone and correlated all the different market cycles that we've seen from the very first one to the one that we're currently in, which is just here. And you can see we've had quite the run-up, and we're very much in an extended cycle now, with this cycle going on. I think we're going to see over six feeders this year for Bitcoin. I think we're going to see $100,000, $150,000 Bitcoin before the end of the year in December. And then I think January, February, even March is when we're going to see the actual peak, which could be over $200,000 Bitcoin. Uh, and the other side of it is, is Ethereum. I think we're going to see $10,000 US Ethereum by the end of this year. And I think we're going to see over $20,000 Ethereum in the first quarter of next year as we're in extended cycle. So, yeah, we had quite the run up and we've consolidated, we've pulled back, we've capitulated and we've bounced off and we're starting to move in the next run up. And this is really similar to what 2013 was where the yellow one here is uh, 2017, the one that the previous cycle, where we had a very consistent run-up. We had multiple pullbacks in that process, but not a capitulation or you know, real low retests. Whereas 2013, we had that initial run and we, we saw some, some local lows and then started to move with a huge parabolic run to, right at the end. So you can see, I've just zoomed in on the four hour time frame. And I've just added a couple of trend lines here. So we've got a 67,100 trend line here, which is very much the, the roof resistance. We've got around the 37,800 mark, which is pretty much where we got to previously. Uh, a little bit higher than that actually is, is previous support, which has been broken down through and breached on this daily candle. And yeah, now, now we're seeing... Well, it's not a daily candle, I should say. It's a, a four-hourly candle. And now we've seen a retest of this 61, 62,000 mark, and we're currently sitting in that range. Now, if we break towards the upside, I think we could potentially uh, spend some more time in and around the 65 to $67,000 mark, and it would be very healthy for Bitcoin. I think the longer we sit in this range of the 62s to 67 range in the month of October the better it is for, for the November and December you know, parabolic run. And if we look at none other than Plan B, Mr. 100 trillion USD himself, he has picked the last few months quite quite well. So August, he, he predicted 47K, which it hit. September, and this is on average, September 43K, which it also hit. And October uh, 63k, and this is on average, so the, so the moving average price of that. So he's saying November we're going to see a $98,000 Bitcoin, and December we're going to see a $135,000 Bitcoin. Again, predictions. This is uh, this is not going to happen 100%, but it's it's very interesting to come and look back at this. This post was done in June 20 this year. So coming and looking, he's, he's had August right, he's had September right. We have to spend a considerable amount of time above the 63k range in order to average the month out at 63,000. So, you know, we could potentially see 67, 70, potential all-time high again. Uh, I know there's a lot of eyeballs on this right now. So, again, congratulations. Congratulations to all those holding. Uh, if you've been a long-term holder, if you've been one of my customers for multiple years, congratulations to you. And, yeah, it's super, super awesome to see Bitcoins at the 67K mark. And, you know, we, we've corrected a little bit now, but it's, it's great to see that all-time high again. 
There's also a lot of really, really, really positive news. On the ETF front, we had the first ETF go live pro, pro shares just recently. We've also had a, a, other ETFs be approved, Van Eck uh, being one of them, and Grayscale talking about converting their, their trust into an ETF. So very, very positive news overall. Let's jump right into it. So this is more of just a quote rather than uh, some news. So from Robert Breedlove, the whole point of money is to enable humans to trust the medium instead of other humans, i.e. counterparties. Bitcoin is the only digital asset in history with zero counterparty risk and no one can corrupt it in any way. So let that just sink in for about a decade. I think that's really, really important to say. El Salvador. Mover and shaker of countries when it comes to Bitcoin. El Salvador just got a $1.3 billion loan from the IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund, and Bitcoin adoption was part of their sales pitch. And this is from Bloomberg. This is a feature, not a bug. So they've gone to the group or organization that issues money globally to all different countries, and they've basically pitched Bitcoin as part of what they're looking for this loan. And they've been making some fantastic progress. So... There's more El Salvadorians that have Bitcoin wallets using the Shaviro app than there are that actually have traditional bank accounts. And the thing's only been around for a month. So in one month's time, more people have signed up and they're using the app than actually people have bank accounts in the whole country. Very, very cool. Jumping into the whole ETF side of things. So the Canadian Asset Manager Purpose Investments has filed to list three more crypto ETFs in Canada. So... The, the Canadian government is approving ETFs left and right. There's been more ETFs uh, listed to or filed to list. So this is really, really positive for Canada and for the crypto market overall. Uh, Tom Lee, who's who's a massive bull, uh, runs Fundstrat, has made some interesting predictions over the years, a lot that have been right. So he's basically saying that future ETFs could see $50 billion in their first year in inflows. So... Very interesting. Inflows are a huge amount of money, $50 billion. But the interesting thing about this is the, the BITO, the, the ProShares fund, actually traded in the first 20 minutes $280 million worth of shares. And over the 24-hour period, it was actually the the fund that saw uh, a billion, almost a billion dollars in trading volume on the first day. It makes it the second most heavily traded new ETF on record, the firm has said, citing Bloomberg. So very, very good news. This is really bullish, really positive for traditional money to be able to get into the crypto market because there's a lot of red tape, a lot of issues for you know investment organizations, hedge funds, insurance companies, pension funds. They have a lot of very strict rules that they have to adhere to because they're managing huge amounts of money for a huge uh, amount of people. So they have to do things very specifically. So like I said before, the Van Eck Bitcoin Futures ETF gets the green light from the SEC and the fund to join uh, ProShares Bitcoin ETF listing on the New York Stock Exchange. So this will, I think, effective as of the 23rd of October or after, uh, which is you know a couple of days from now, uh, which is really, really positive news. Another bit of information or insight is the, the Bitcoin Grayscale Trust is going to be converted into an ETF. So currently, Grayscale is one of the biggest holders of physical Bitcoin in the entire world. They hold $38 billion in Bitcoin on behalf of their customers, and they're going to be converting into an ETF, which is very, very cool. Uh, again, just talking about this from, from Anthony Pompolino, uh, they're also going to be uh, the first or the biggest, the world's first Bitcoin spot ETF. Another bit of insight from Anthony Pompolino is uh, Interactive Brokers just announced that they will empower registered investment advisors, so financial advisors across the United States to invest in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So what this means is hundreds of billions of dollars can now enter the market more easily. The thorn in crypto side. <laughs> this has been, uh, I'm not a massive fan of Tether or Bitfinex really because there's been just a lot of what seems to be shady stuff over the years. But this is really positive news. I'm really, really happy to see this because it gives a lot of confidence to the market. So uh, Tether, Bitfinex, which are all owned by the same people, they're basically getting 
a slap on the wrist. They're paying $42.5 million in settlement fines to the CFTC, and then they're off to do business. And I literally saw, as this was released the next day, there's a massive amount of Tether printed. Uh, I think there's something like $70 billion in Tether currently circulating. So why is this important? Every single cycle, there is a bid report or, you know, information found out about Tether that they're not holding what they say they're holding in, in reserves. And it spoots the market and it gives a lot of people uh, fear and, and, and doubt on, on what's going on here. So by this actually being nipped in the butt once and for all, it is great to see this here. Influencers. Influencers, influencers, influencers. So we've seen Formula One be at sponsored by Crypto.com. We've seen uh, the UFC be, be sponsored by Crypto.com. The FTS Exchange is putting out a huge amount of money to sponsoring different uh, arenas as well as teams, as well as you know sports teams and all that sort of thing. So to see Mariah Carey, and this is no small uh, influence, so 20, almost 22 million followers, uh, talking about how she's uh, using Gemini and giving everyone a shout out there. And you can get 20 bucks free by going on here. So very, very cool to see. And we've also seen Coinbase. They're partnering with the NBA. They're going to be the f official crypto platform of the NBA, the Women's NBA and NBA 2K League in the United States. So this is, again, another great sponsorship, getting the brands out there, getting people to start buying cryptocurrency. And it gets me excited. I'm actually going to show you in just a second how early we are from that. And then finally, our last bit of news. We've got some some news from back home in Australia. Uh, Queensland Investment Corporation, which manages around uh, 92 billion Australian dollars or 69 billion US dollars, uh, it's the Australia's fifth largest pension fund, is starting to explore cryptocurrency in uh, in an investment vehicle for, for their fund holders. So this is really, really positive. It's great to see um, big businesses, you know, funds like this in Australia getting involved. And then this is the information I wanted to share with you to show you how early we are. So Facebook's about to launch their digital wallet. They're also doing a rebrand, which you may have seen. And this just gives you context. So uh, compared to Facebook users, the, the amount of registered Coinbase users is around 2 to 3%. So when you look at it like this, the amount of people globally that have a Coinbase account is around the 2 to 3%, which is very much in the innovators and early adopters phase of the market. We're still so freaking early, it's disgusting, and I'm super, super excited to see what unravels from Facebook launching their own digital wallet. And then finally, some really, really late and kind of crazy news. I actually have one of my clients do really well from this. They had buy orders sitting open at $28,000 US on Binance.us. So we saw a huge flash crash and you can see it here, there's just a huge wick going all the way down to 8200 bucks. And of course, people jump in for the notoriety. Uh, Ran has said that an intern press sell instead of buy, and we've fired him apologies for any inconvenience caused. But what actually happened was it was a bug in a client's trading algorithm. So it basically caused a market order to, to, to sell and treated a bunch of... So the flash crash on Binance.us had an impact on the price of Bitcoin across the wider market. On other major exchanges, the price initially fell from around 65500 to 64200 Despite a slight recovery, it failed to return to the pre-crash highs and has continued to slide and it's currently sitting at around the 63000 So, you know, it did actually see a cascading effect across multiple exchanges and uh, it's definitely, I'm sure, hurt a lot of people on Binance.us. Uh, fortunately, some of my clients, I didn't personally pick up any Bitcoin for under 30 grand, but they've, uh, you know, $28,000 given that it's at 63 is pretty amazing given that there's uh, there's instantly 100% profit over, over, you know, a few hours. So very, very cool. So yeah, very, very crazy. And I guess it pays to have some, some orders set, you know, crazy low orders set on different exchanges because you never know when that's going to happen. Fortunately, it was localized. It was only on a single exchange, so it didn't really affect the overall market. But, you know, this stuff does happen because we're very, very early. 
So that's pretty much it from me. I uh, wanted to do this quick update and congratulate you all. There is a fantastic amount of positive news in the marketplace. I've only done over a tiny bit of it. I wanted to just give you a quick update. So again, congratulations if you're still holding in and I will see you in the next video. If you want to support the channel, go and download my Crypto Fast Start Guide by going to CryptoFastStartGuide.com. I'm also giving away $100,000 in crypto. Uh, all you have to do is go and watch this video and the previous seven videos and comment on it to be in the draw to win. Make sure you go and check out Max Wright's webinar. He's talking about a train where $10,000 invested wisely today can give you a passive income of $100,000 per year in just 18 months if you take this easy step today. So go and register for this webinar. There is a lot of great content in there. You're going to learn a lot as a bare minimum and it's going to completely change your life as a maximum. The link is in the description for this webinar. It's also up here. If you have crypto and you want to earn up to 8%, use BlockFi. You can sign up using the link on the screen there or the link in the description. You can also borrow against your cryptocurrency rather than triggering capital gains events. I'm not a financial advice, I'm not a tax accountant, so I'm not actually giving you financial advice, but I'd definitely recommend speaking to someone who knows your situation. You can actually get $250 in crypto as a bonus when you transfer $100 or more into this wallet. And then finally, grab a crypto.com card and grab a crypto.com account. Uh, you can get a free $25 sign-up bonus by going to this link. And the beauty of this is you can transfer crypto to your card and be able to spend it real time in shops. So as always, support the channel uh, because the more I get support from these affiliate offers, the more I'm actually putting into this campaign in order to give away to you guys. So that's it from me. I really enjoyed making this video for you. If you really enjoyed this content and you like these short kind of punchy videos, make sure to leave a comment below and just give me some feedback there. Again, make sure to give the video a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.